I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction. Here with your feeder flash for Wednesday, September the 11th. Remember 9-11, guys. You know where you were at when it happened. Uh, I was sitting there with uh, my college daughter now. She was just a baby uh, sitting in a little rocker there, and I was wondering what kind of a world she was going to grow up in. Hasn't turned out quite as bad as, I, as I'd feared, or not near as bad as I feared, but uh, still, sometime during the day, remember that and uh, think some thoughts about it, and and, uh, and don't let it slip your mind too far. Uh, today's report is, uh, is brought to you in part by NationalBeefWire.com. Uh, today's spotlight is the Joplin Regional Stockyards Cow and Bull Auction every Wednesday. You can watch it on the National Beef Wire at channel 6000. Uh, Joplin has a good run of cows and bulls every Wednesday. They probably have more replacement cows uh, and females on their regular sale than, than most auctions would on a special. So you can tune in there and, and view and bid on that sale right on channel 6000 on the National Beef Wire. Did we see a false bottom on Tuesday? We saw the board uh, start out kind of creeping lower again like it has been uh, for the last several weeks but then all of a sudden uh, about face and, and go up pretty good and uh, now it's got everybody wondering if we've hit the bottom uh, of, of these prices after this big uh, crash we've had here, especially the last several weeks since we've had that fire at the Tyson Fresh Meats in Holcomb, Kansas, and then we've seen all the uh, all the the manipulation, uh, the collusion, the price fixing, the gouging, uh, everything that's gone on, the misdeeds that's happened in this industry, and it's basically uh, taken uh, everything out of it. Uh, everybody's just sick to death. And, uh, and your Packers are just reaping the rewards. I've never seen it though in probably the last 25 years that I've been reporting markets and, and keeping up with what's going on. I've never seen people so much in arms as they are right now. And I hope, uh, I actually hope that this wasn't uh, 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 the bottom quite yet. I don't want prices to fall anymore, but I, I'd hate to see this thing race back up and people forget about all this so quick because I think we might be on the cusp of getting something done. Uh, I've never had so many calls about people wanting information so they can tell their uh, congressional leaders uh, either at the state or the federal level. I think that's fantastic. I've never seen, seen or heard so many people that uh, are interested in, in getting in some type of a group to try to make a difference, whether it be uh, their, cattle, uh, their local cattle association, one of the bigger groups, uh, a lot of people talking about joining up with RCAF. Uh, that it's unbelievable how much more credibility uh, the RCAF association has gotten since uh, these blatant, blatant uh, uh, breaking of, of rules and laws uh, over the last several weeks since we had that plant go down as to fire. And, uh, and I think it's probably a good thing. But uh, we need to get something done. I uh, talked to uh, the people at Consolidated Beef Producers at the office there in Canyon, Texas. They had several calls. Uh, people that uh, sold negotiated fat cattle that wanted to join in with other people that are selling them and uh, give their show list to them to let them market their fat cattle for them and try to get as much leverage on this thing as we possibly can. If we're not going to sell them at auction, which I, I'm a big proponent of, I think we should sell them at auction, and I don't care whether it's a brick and mortar sale, I don't care if, if it's an online sale, I don't care if they throw everybody in the back of the pickup and drive down the feedlot alley. Something like that needs to happen, some type of a competitive uh, deal, if, if it's not at least a, a, a haggling, negotiated, competitive uh, uh, arrival at a price. but. Uh, uh, you guys that are selling your, your, your fat cattle negotiated, selling them on a whim, basis jumping, just out there flying by the seat of your pants, uh, you're ruining the industry. We've got to get together on this deal. You're, you're playing one game, another guy's playing another, and the Packers are playing you. Let me, uh, let me be real clear about that. They, they're taking this industry away from us as fast as we can get it. Uh, this is a trickle-down type industry as far as markets go and the, and the highest up one that we can have any control on is the price of our fat cattle. What few are left in loose hands because so many of them 
are already in the captive supplies uh, due to formula and a lot of you formula yards uh, you guys aren't doing them any favors either uh, turning extra numbers in and and the Packers are just uh, tickled to get them whenever you guys see a basis but uh, if you guys want to just give it up uh, you just go back and look the history of the hog business uh, until it come to an abrupt end in 1998 when they took the hog price down to eight cents a pound your cost of production was in the high 20s or low 30s and then we had no more independent hog feeders and then uh, eventually they came back and and asked them if they wanted to work for them using their facilities uh, your packers going out using a producer's facilities his labor them sending pigs to him and sending feed to him and him basically just uh, working for wages if that's what you guys want to do uh, more power to you but I tell you what I think it's uh, it's a shame to see what's happening in this industry right now but uh, we did see some recovery on the board a nice recovery there mid-morning and uh, it was mostly due to uh, kind of China trade talk rumors nothing really ever come of it but uh, like we say in most things where there's smoke there's usually fire so I think something is in the works on this China deal and, uh, and we, we've got them uh, cut off pretty good we've got some tariffs on them and they're starting to work uh, and uh, and I think uh, anything that we can do like that we've got to get behind our president people and and give him the support that he needs uh, to, to make these tough decisions and to play hardball with some of these foreign countries that uh, have been taking advantage of us for a long time look at some other things going on uh, we're fighting a fake meat uh, we know that and and, uh, and and they're wanting to take a bigger portion uh, I was telling a group at uh, at the Haythorn Ranch there with Western Video Market on a talk there that uh, uh, on on Monday night that uh, your 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 fake dairy industry has given up almost 15 percent of their market share to the fake product, whether it be almond milk or or uh, or fake uh, you know uh, creams to put in your coffee, uh, fake cheese, fake all that stuff, all that fake dairy stuff has taken about 15 percent of their market share we can't stand it guys we cannot stand it we've got to resist that stuff we've got to educate people on what uh, on how healthy uh, whole beef is it's, it's it doesn't include ingredients it's a whole food and and uh, that's as good as you can get and uh, this fake meat stuff uh, they cannot stand uh, up and down on the platform of it being healthy because it's not as healthy it's very unhealthy uh, can contains a lot of things that uh, have proven to be harmful to your health but uh, but people are, are still going after it because it's the new trendy thing uh, in this progressive world right now because uh, we've got so many people that are unfairly and uneducatedly um, making people believe that the cows are harming the environment but let's go on and, and talk about some things that are going on your board on uh, Tuesday October live cattle futures up a dollar ninety five at ninety six fifteen December was up two oh five at one oh one twenty two September feeder cattle up a buck seven at one thirty three ninety all this happened kind of mid morning uh, right up till the close because uh, not much it was kind of weak and just uh, sputtering along there most of the morning October feeder cattle up a dollar twenty two at one thirty one oh five yeah it did make people feel a little bit better but uh, we've got to see a lot more out of this market uh, uh, but at some point we are going to see this thing go I don't think we're quite there yet we've got too many uh, market ready fat cattle to work through uh, the next 45 days or so before we can really expect to see this thing launch but at some point it's gonna launch you guys that, that are, are selling cattle cheaper you need to reload with lighter ones uh, you guys that uh, want to take advantage of this market on the upside and, and be something positive for the industry instead of just taking advantage of a short movement uh, you need to get on get ready to get on and start riding you might want to want to purchase some call options or something to so you can be well positioned when this thing does take off because uh, once it becomes evident it's already too late your fat cattle uh, did have a little bit more trade. Remember, I was so frustrated on the last visit because 
your Packers come out on Monday morning, and I'll be darned if we don't have people puking cattle to them a lot lower than the sharply lower market that we had last week. Uh, and just just out there on their own, just doing it, uh, not trying to get together a bit uh, at all, not trying to get any kind of leverage together, just acting like sheep and, and laying down, letting them run right over the top of them. It's unbelievable that we see that week in, week out. Uh, we had a little bit more trade on Tuesday. Of course, your Packers, they always are together. I mean, if they don't find collusion with this PNS investigation on this, they're absolutely blind because we had a little bit of trade in the morning because I told you the board was kind of quiet. We did have a little bit of trade. About three bucks lower dressed than anything we had seen yet. At 157 dressed. Had a few sales up to 160, but 157 in some few early Northern Plain sales. Unbelievable. But then when the board took off, what happened? Your Packers just shut up. Nothing. And, and, and it's amazing how they all do it at the same time. Yet we've got these cattle feeders uh, just running around willy-nilly like chickens with their head cuts on, cut off. And uh, you never know whenever they might sell a pen of cattle or a few loads or whatever and, and just wipe out, take the legs out of everybody else that's, that's trying to, to gain some ground in this market. But uh, got to get together, guys. Uh, you, there's several of these marketing cooperatives out there. Uh, I had a message from a guy uh, that works with a, an Iowa cooperative. Uh, that uh, that puts several farmer feeder groups together, and uh, a lot of them will just have a load or whatever, and you know, and he's selling a thousand, eleven, twelve hundred, maybe fifteen hundred a week. Well, that amount counts. Uh, the guys sitting out there with a load or two don't. If you've just got a few cattle to sell, you've got to get together with somebody uh, that's got more contacts than you, and and guys that have cattle like you do, and you can put them together, and it helps make a difference. A big difference and you think oh they're going to charge me a commission they might charge you a few bucks a head what the hell talk about this fat deal like I said some 157 uh, dressed few up to 160 not very much not very much probably more than we saw confirmed there was only a few hundred that were actually confirmed but there's always a few more than that they'll probably show up on mandatory price reporting on the morning report but uh, box beef cutout values continue to drop. We don't care. We're not going to take that as a negative if box beef cutout values uh, continue to drop because they, uh, they, they push those beef purchasers too far uh, back when they were raping the fat cattle market. And, and just because your box beef cutout value dropped, don't let up on them, guys, because it's got a long ways to drop to get back in line with what your fat cattle are bringing. But choice cuts on uh, Tuesday afternoon, 225.38. That was down a buck 57. Your selects at $200.98, down 94 cents. Uh, talk about what's going on else out in the country. Uh, uh, St. Joe Stockyards, uh, my favorite old sale back in my stomping ground, spent uh, every Wednesday and every Monday too, for that matter, at St. Joe Stockyards for years and years. But uh, my friends there at St. Joe are going to have their Customer Appreciation Day on Wednesday here. And uh, I think they've got a pretty good run of cattle, 2,000 head or better. They do have some yearlings in there and some pretty nice ones. So if you guys are looking for some cattle, get an order into St. Joe Stockyards. And you can have a free meal on Mark Service there. But uh, let's see what else is happening around. Your uh, Western Video Market, that's where I spent the day on Tuesday I had a, 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 did a uh, speech there or a, a speaking uh, in, engagement there on Monday night where they had a nice dinner there at the Haythorn Ranch gosh they put out a feed there and it's such a beautiful place to go they have sales there they've got an event center there a nice building there that you can do a lot of things in plenty of parking uh, and you get that full uh, western Nebraska ranch experience through there the whole time but I uh, had a good meal in there Monday night and had a good talk, had uh, over 100 people there listening and, and uh, very well engaged and enjoyed talking to many of them uh, both on Monday night and Tuesday at the Western Video Market sale there. But uh, that's our Haythorn Ranch sale. It's kind of centered around uh, Dwayne Mays, uh, one of their biggest consigners with Ogallala Livestock Auction. And, and, uh, and uh, they've been having that sale for 
for about 25 years out there. Uh, and uh, that's their farthest east sale for Western video. Uh, but uh, it's well attended. Uh, there was a big crowd, especially at lunchtime, because uh, I think the locals got wind that uh, you could come in there at lunch because you couldn't find a seat when it got to be lunchtime. But uh, uh, a good crowd there. The bidding was very active, as sick as it could have been. And, and everybody asked, uh, you know, what they thought of the market. Everybody pretty much said that it was better than it, than it had a right to be. Uh, they started out on Tuesday morning with yearlings. They had a lot of them, and uh, and they sold uh, pretty darn well for the way things are. And then just about the time they got on the calves, and you thought the deal was really going to get sick, well then the board turned around, and uh, it turned out to be a pretty good sale. And uh, everybody was uh, very very concerned about these market conditions. People that were there at the sale, uh, even just ranchers, you know, cow calf producers were wondering what they could do to try to get together and and help things but uh it, it that everybody's thinking right they know we've got to do something because if we just keep uh screwing around here and and losing uh all of our grip on this uh on this industry we're going to be without it here before too long and you're what when you think well how bad could it could be well your packers will want to come in and contract those calves at weaning and uh, and uh, they're not going to have a lot of competition, uh, and, and there's not going to be any individuals bidding on those cattle, so they're going to keep the price su uh, suppressed there, uh, like it's not already suppressed. They're going to keep that price down, and then they're going to control uh, the the cattle from from the time they leave the cow calf operation all the way until they're they're slaughtered in their plants. So you guys that like to to buy cattle and background them, you guys that like to order buy cattle. Uh, you guys that that, that grow cattle uh, at any extent uh, in between those processes, uh, you you independent cattle feeders, uh, they don't want you in the business. They would just assume you'd be gone. Uh, you, how many guys you know that raise uh, feeder pigs anymore, or or buy and sell feeder pigs, or or uh, fair to finish at their farm uh, unless they're doing it under contract? None, none. So. Uh, you need to need to be sure and, and think about that and think about the way you live the way you raise your family and whether or not that you want to continue to do it that way find a way to get active in this deal and start pressing on let's get some quotes out of the western video market sale there at Haythorn Ranch uh, those herb cattle that I told you about out of Dillon Montana I told you there was uh, between 10 and 11 thousand head of them they sold right off the bat there early on Tuesday morning. Uh, sold pretty darn good there. They were heavy. About 6,000 head of the steers. They weighed from 9 to 970 pounds uh, there for September delivery. They bring 125 to $129. Not bad for a great big old steer like that, but he was green and, and awful good. Uh, had a lot of spade heifers. Uh, about 4,500 head of spade heifers there on the herb cattle all around Dillon, Montana there. They weighed from 840 to 890 for the most part, bring from 123 to 12850, just a little bit back of the steers there. And then one lot weighed 800 pounds of spade heifers on the herb cattle at 130 and a quarter, weighing 800 smooth. Uh, you wanna talk about what some light calves brought that was impressive later on in the day. Diamond Cattle Company out of Eureka, Nevada, uh, they had 120 head of lightweight weaned steers, not ballers, weaned steers. That's the main thing. 410 pound weaned steers in Nevada with November delivery, 120 head of them bring 197. So then, and the main deal there, like I like I stress, was weaned. So many of them cattle you see come off the video, uh, they wean them on the way to the truck, and and most of those. Uh, and, and out west, uh, they got a pretty good weight to them. Most of those six weight balling calves uh, just sorted off the cows right there uh, before they weigh and load those cattle. Uh, they're awful good quality, but you've got to give these buyers a little more value than that if you want to get into some of those top prices. But six weight uh, balling steer calves uh, for fall delivery, mostly 150 to 160 on the western sale on Tuesday. Uh, they they had some uh, some other classes on there. They had two lots of uh, replacement heifers, 
uh, Nevada and California, they both weighed 820 pounds and bring $150 on 820 pound heifers, so that's a pretty good price for those replacements. And they had some $1,750 young pairs there. They were out of Nebraska and $1,550 uh, bred heifers weighing about 975 there and they were out of Nebraska. So uh, interesting sale there and had a good time visiting with a lot of different people that watch the feeder flash regularly and, and I hope they continue to watch and share that on their social media or however they get a hold of it. Let's talk about some of your feeder cattle markets. Uh, uh, also, uh, that happened on Tuesday, real-time index on cattle market central uh, late in the day on Tuesday at 134.37, down 43 cents. Uh, look at some of your markets. The best one to get a trend out of, which uh, we're still seeing light receipts, and that bothers me, guys, because the past six weeks or so, really the whole last half of the summer, we've been seeing really light receipts, and that is because people didn't like the market and they had a place to keep them. Uh, so they had green grass or, or plenty of forage there. So they're holding on to these cattle. We always have a big rush of cattle coming to fall. We don't need the summer cattle on top of them because uh, we're already in market trouble already. If you add to that with pressure of extra receipts we're not used to, that makes it even worse. Ozarks Regional Stockyards, West Plains, Missouri, 2,700 head, and they didn't have hardly any big drafts. It was mostly small deals. Uh, getting that time of the year, just some kind of cleanup sales, smaller producers, probably on the most part wouldn't have been real, real fancy or, or even that many uh, attractive sets on there. And your price was uh, mostly 3 to $6 lower on steers and heifers, spots as much as $8 lower, but everything just continues lower. Maybe we'll start to see uh, a little bit of a, a bottom, even if it's a false bottom here, we'd like to slow the bleeding just a little bit. Here's a market that I've never talked about before on here, uh, and I should have, but uh, we have we have broadcasted Rezac Commission Company, St. Mary's, Kansas, for a long, long time on DV Auction, but we've uh, we've just recently been able to get them reporting on Cattle Market Central uh, because they have a unique uh, clerking system there. But we got that thing figured out. From now on, we're going to be quoting. Denny Rezac's cattle at uh, Rezac uh, Commission Company there in uh, St. St. Mary's, Kansas. And why would we want to do that? Look at all these big jags of yearling steers that they have at uh, at Rezac's. And uh, and they and this is this is not a special sale. This is kind of the the type of sales they have all the time in season. But uh, you look at these uh, these bigger strings of yearlings, mostly load lots or bigger, including. 139 steers weigh 815 pounds at a buck 41. Rezac Livestock Commission, St. Mary's, Kansas. Another market that uh, we've just recently brought on and it's starting to get in season for them to start having some big sales is Atkinson Livestock Market, Atkinson, Nebraska. The old reliable they call it. Uh, it's up there on the yellow brick road too guys. It's kind of in the center part and uh, and look at some of the big strings of cattle that they had out of there. Mostly nine weight steers, and you guys can see the prices on them, and uh, and they can sell them as high as anybody. But a couple of uh, of, uh, of jags they had on there that uh, didn't go in the nine weight category. Well, they actually would have. But 98 head of a thousand pound steers bring 127 and a quarter, which is pretty darn good on a 96 dollar fat cattle market and 54 head of 655 pound steer calves at $155. But the highest quote that I saw all day on Tuesday come from one of my favorite markets there at Fredonia, Kansas, Fredonia Livestock Auction, 64 head, 767 pound steers bring a buck 44.75. And that's your feeder flash for Wednesday.